you have a... okay okay some persons are joining our colleagues let me let me hold on a bit let us hold on a bit Uh, Ms. Harpo? Hello, good morning. Good morning. Is it Keisha or Kesha? It's Kesha and Harpo. Oh, Kesha, nice. I'm Lauren Marsh. Um, Kesha, I'm your presenter for today, okay? Which company are you from? I'm from Barnet Limited. Oh, okay. Good to have you. Robert, you hear You can talk now? Pardon me? No, I'm, I'm seeing another colleague, Robert. He said he had some issues with his device. These no okay. Well, let me mute him then. Okay, so I will continue. Uh, Kesha, you may mute. Me. All right, moving on. So, colleagues, if you intend to make a position redundant there are two guiding doctrines that i want you to always peruse or peruse if necessary that's the employment termination and redundancy payments act of 1974 and the labor relations code both are online which is good so you need to peruse them i'll share a bit of each as i go along but these are the guiding documents or legislations and policy that guides the process itself all right um, Dr. Marsh. Yes, yes. I'm sorry to interrupt. The screen is very small. I don't know if you can. My screen? Yes. The screen that is sharing. Our colleagues, is that a general issue? You're using a device or a phone? I use my phone. My um laptop seems sure. not to be. But if you're using a phone, uh, that's who? Pat uh, Patricia? Yeah. You're using a phone. Colleagues, do you, is my screen small to you? No, it's all right. It's I, okay. Right, it's because you're using a phone, Patricia. Okay, all right. There's nothing I can do about that at all. What's, what's happening with the laptop? I, I was on it waiting, and then it bumped me out, and then I can't log in back on it. So I just closed it and used the phone. Mm. So that's fine. But I don't, I don't want you to miss anything, though. You know. No, I, I, I'm listening. Okay. I'm listening. And as I explained to you earlier, colleagues, we make the position redundant, not the person. All right. So what are some of the common reasons for redundancy? Uh, sometimes there's structural decline, uh, workforce restructure, technological shift, or business uh, decline. Now, what I've been observing over the years is that many organizations, or not many, several organizations that I've worked with, they tend to want to utilize the redundancy process as a means of getting rid of certain employees, right? I will say to you that uh, while you may get away with it if done properly, I will, I must agree, I must um, concur with that particular statement because it has happened more than one time. Persons have used that and they have, it has worked out. But if you can't rationalize redundancy, then you may run into problems if the person challenges it at the Ministry of Labor. So if you want to penalize uh, an employee or team member or essentially several the employee relationship i will say to you use the correct channel if it's a disciplinary matter you utilize the disciplinary process uh if it is a matter where you can know it's a, if it's a performance related matter you utilize the pip you coach the individual and then you move into discipline but be very careful if you attempt to use the reverse process as a means of getting rid of certain employees. I'll say to you that before I get to that point in the presentation, that when you're doing a redundancy, it's not an overnight thing. It won't take a week or a couple of days. It may take several weeks, over a month or two months. So it is not advisable to use it to penalize employees. Any comments on that? No comments, colleagues? Okay.
right? So reasons for redundancy. Uh, in some cases, a company wants to outsource uh, certain services and they may need to cut uh, the, the, the workforce. Uh, under COVID, there was a decrease in activity for some organizations or companies. So they had to, they were losing uh, revenue. So they had to decrease activity and, and the simultaneous, and there will be a simultaneous reduction in the labor force as well. As I mentioned before, sometimes there's an introduction of new technology and that may lead to changes. Uh, there may be reorganization and reengineering. Bankruptcies do happen at some times for some companies. And uh, lastly, sometimes the company is performing uh, poorly during a particular period. So you may have to reduce uh, the uh, workforce. The fact is, colleagues, if you have any of these challenges at any point and you need to do to do a redundancy exercise, you need to be transparent to persons who will be affected by the by this particular issue that you are facing. May I move on? Yes. Okay. All right, I'm going to share something with you from the ETRPA, that is the Employment Termination Rules of Payments Act of 1974. And I won't read this in its entirety, but firstly, for an employee to be eligible for redundancy payments, they must be employed to the same company for 104 weeks continuously. How long is that, colleagues? Is that two years? Yes, that's two years. Okay, I'm not hearing other persons though. Robert has no microphone. Uh, Cecile, are you here? Yes, I am. You're multitasking. <laughs> oh no, I'm listening to you, Dr. Marsh. Okay, uh, Patricia, are you hearing me very well? Yes, sir, I'm hearing you. Sandra, Good morning. Good morning, I'm hearing and I'm responding to. Oh yes, in the chat? I don't no. Know. I open my mic and respond. <laughs> okay. So mm -hmm. eligibility criteria, first, for employees is under four weeks, right? Uh, secondly, you'll find that the payment is attributable to an employee if A, the employer ceases to carry on business and employment has ceased for a commercial worker. B, the fact that the requirements of the, bus the business for employees of a particular kind of ceased or diminished or expected to cease or diminish. And C, the fact that he has suffered personal injury or developed any disease due to the nature of employment. So these are the conditions. Now, we hear the term medical redundancy all the, all the time. Am I correct? Yes. Where would that fall here? C. C. And, and what would happen in a situation where C occurs? Can I give an example, anybody? Okay, so with C, essentially, it may be a case where the person would have suffered an injury on the job. So the, the, the employee may make the request for the position to be made uh, redundant. However, that request uh, doesn't have to be fulfilled by the employer if they need to maintain the position, right? So in that particular case, what you will negotiate with the employer, employee is what we call a mutual separation. So you would utilize the redundancy calculation, which I'll share with you in a bit, to engage the individual in a mutual separation process. And I can talk about that if you need me to at a later time, okay? But you wouldn't, you, if you, you wouldn't make the position redundant. Is that clear to you, colleagues? Yes. Yes, that's clear. Okay. So write a term, no mutual separation, very important term. Sandra is asking, what if the person is employed for less than 104 weeks and the position will be made redundant? Well, the truth is this, that they won't be entitled to the payment 
But uh, what you, what some organizations tend to do, if the person will get notice, uh, essentially, and they will get whatever entitlements, <clears throat> whatever outstanding benefits that they may have, or or so on. They may be entitled to vacation, as, as you know, after 110 days in the qualifying year. So if they have any outstanding days, <clears throat> you compensate them and give them the notice. All right, but by law, you have to work on job four weeks to qualify for redundancy. All right. Um, there was something else I was going to ask, but uh, none of the second, it will come back to me. Andrew, I hope that's clear to you. It is, thanks. Yes. But uh, again, colleagues, uh, nothing in the law prevents you know, from giving more than what the law prescribes, all right? So if you want to give the person something else for redundancy, fine, but it is not a requirement, all right, uh, based on the stipulations of the ETRPA. Now, the app goes further. It says if by some regulation during the period he receives payment or is engaged uh, to work for limited times only, an employer shall not be entitled to return the payment if, if he terminates the contract under which he is employed without provision. B, if the employee is up for retirement, by which instance he is entitled to, to pension, superannuation, or retirement benefits for misconduct. And D, if the employer in writing offers to renew contract before it expires and the employee has unreasonable refused that offer, the offer must come no less than two weeks after the expiration uh, date of the contract. So these are the conditions under which the employee may not be entitled to redundancy. But I want to point to the last, to D, because D mentions two weeks there. And it is encouraged, colleagues, that because of this particular uh, narrative here, that when you're breaking contracts, it's just one example, you break it for more than two weeks. If you don't do that, employment will be deemed to be continuous, right? So when you're breaking a contract, it shouldn't be for three days or for, for five days. You break it for two weeks and a day, two weeks, three days, three weeks, because you want to ensure that there's a clear cut and that employment is not continuous with the individual. All right? Are there any questions on that or comments? Colleagues, ask, you know, please ask, because if you see me again, there's going to be a consultancy fee. So anything crosses your mind, just ask, and I will try to assist in the best way possible. Are there any questions? All right, so I guess not. I will move on. Moving on. So claims for redundancy payment. Employee shall not be entitled to redundancy payment unless before the end of a six months uh, period, the, the period that has been agreed to. The employer has made a claim for the payment in writing, where the employer dies before the end of, a six, of the six months, and the aforementioned criteria has been met. The personal rep for the employer has a year to make a claim. So here we see the act now telling the, uh, demonstrating the time frame in which the employer has to make the claim for redundancy payments. All right. While this is here in the act, I've seen cases where because the situation is at the Ministry of Labor, it may take over a year for the payment to be made. All right, so this is important, but based on practice, depending on what the nature of the, the cases are, are dispute at the Ministry of Labor, it may take more than the time frames here. Now, I'm going to share with the, with the team or colleagues here, the, the calculation. I will just skip this and go to the calculation. All right, so calculation of redundancy payment. Workers who are dismissed on the grounds of redundancy and who have fulfilled the necessary qualification are entitled to redundancy payment. After working on the for four weeks, two years, the rates of redundancy payments are for one to 10 years of service, two weeks pay for each year work, for service, over 10 years, three weeks pay for each year of service from the 11th year. Let me stay here for a bit. So colleagues, if I'm working for five years, right? 
How many weeks am I entitled to? Two weeks. Two weeks for what? Each year? Yes. What about if I'm working eight years? Same two weeks or three weeks? Two weeks. Two weeks. On the 11th, on the 10th year, how much am I entitled to? Three weeks. No, no, weeks. For, no two, two weeks. Two weeks. And from the 11th year? Three weeks. Three weeks. What are we utilizing? Are we utilizing the salary I was earning back then or the most, the most current um, salary? Most current. Okay. Very good. Okay, but for the for the eleventh year, though, is it, tax, is, it tax, is it taxable? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, question yes. for the eleventh year. I mean, for somebody who is at work twelve years, for instance, wouldn't it be two years for the first ten years and then three weeks for the years after that? Is no, that from, what the, from the eleventh year? You start counting three weeks. Okay. Right. All right. So, so if it's 12 years, at first we get 36 weeks pay. Well, you can calculate it. I'm not good at math. That. But, uh, okay. it, three times 12, 36. Okay. Right. But it's three weeks onwards. No, it's three weeks from the 11th year, you know. That's what I'm saying. And so right. is it that for the first 10 years, uh, yes. if somebody's work has done 12 years, for the first 10 years, I would pay two weeks. And then yes. for the years after that, I, yes. I pay three weeks. Yes, yes. That's what I wanted to yes, clarify. Yes. Thank you. Yes, yes. All right. And there are, there's also a breakdown for the fractions. So where there's a fraction of a year's employment, that is four years, three months, four years, five months, and four years, 10 months. Such fraction shall be treated as follows. Disregarded if it is it does not exceed 13 weeks. And some will argue that 13 weeks is a, is a good amount of time to disregard. How long is 13 weeks? That is like what? Three, uh, months. three months basically going, right? So they're saying disregard that. Good. Mm -hmm. However, the second bullet, the third bullet part here says reckoned as one half, which means half. This is just old English, of a year of one year of employment if it exceeds 13 weeks. Or does not exceed 39 weeks. So it's saying here that if, it, if it's beyond 13 weeks, then you get half year compensation. Beyond 13, but does not exceed 39. And you get a full year's compensation uh, if uh, if it exceeds 39 weeks. That's the fourth bullet point there. I've seen a comment in the chat. Hold on. Okay, I see Robert saying 13 weeks is four months. No, it's three months. It wouldn't be in uh, three months, basically. They are about. So the example is there. I, the worker was made redundant after being employed continuously for four years and five months. He would be entitled to redundant payments of nine weeks, four years at uh, two weeks, yeah, eight weeks overall, and five months, half year, entitlement one week. All right. So these are the calculations. And colleagues, uh, I, I will share with you later that this information here in terms of the calculation should also be included in the redundancy letter. Any questions? Okay, moving on. So as I mentioned to you earlier, I will be speaking a bit on the labor relations code and I am um, Asking colleagues to download the labor relations code if you don't have it already. It's a very important guide. It's not a it's not an act, it's a guide. So part three, personal management, and part two, uh, security of workers. 